This demonstration is going to illustrate the properties of a parallel hole collimator when used with a gamma camera. In place of our source of gamma radiation, we're going to use some light bulbs as a source of visible radiation, and in place of our crystal in the gamma camera, we're going to use this translucent screen, and as you'll see, without any collimator, we get no image at all. But if we take a parallel hole collimator, which for this model um, I call my LETR collimator because it's made out of lots of empty toilet rolls representing the holes in the gamma camera collimator but much, much, much larger. If I put that collimator in front of our detector crystal I present the whole thing up to our source and you can see now we do indeed get an image. We can see two separate spots. And indeed, if I flash the top source on and off, you see it's the top image that flashes, so this image is the right way up. If we look at the magnification, if I move the detector to one side for a moment, the distance between our sources is that, and if we look at the distance between the two images, we see that it's the same. So this is not magnified or minified, it's a life-size image with a magnification of one. You can see here, when we're close up, we do separate the two sources. They are just resolved. We can see there are two there. If we bring the whole thing further away, and I'm moving the detector further away from the source now, you can see that very soon we get to the point where the two get so blurred, they merge into each other. They're no longer resolved. It looks like one large source rather than two separate ones. So the resolution has got worse as we get further away. But the magnification hasn't changed. The parallel hole collimator gives us a magnification that doesn't change with distance. Here, the two sources are the same distance apart. Uh, the two images are the same distance apart of the sources, um, but they're resolved. Here, they're the same distance apart, but they're blurred into each other. They're no longer resolved. Sensitivity is the other property that we're interested in, and that's best seen by turning off one of the sources and try to judge the total amount of light. We're interested in the total light collected, not just the brightness of one hole. So try and imagine the total amount of light there as we get further away. As we get further away, the whole thing gets more blurred, so it covers a larger area, but the brightness of any one individual spot representing a hole in the collimator gets dimmer. So when we're close up, we have got a few bright spots, as we get further away, the brightness of each spot goes down, but we get more of them, and the total amount of light stays the same. The brightness of any individual hole goes down according to 1 over the square of the distance. But the width and the height of the spot increases as according to the distance, so the total area, and hence the total number of spots, increases as the square of the distance, and those two effects exactly cancel out the total amount of light received is independent of distance. The sensitivity of this collimator is independent of distance. It's the same whether you're further away or close for sensitivity, but resolution, the blurring of the image, the ability to separate two separate images is good when you're close, it gets worse the further away you get. And those are the properties of a parallel hole collimator. Now as you can see, this is not a very good resolution collimator. It has rather large holes and therefore we don't get very good resolution. If we want to improve the resolution, one way is to get smaller holes. So if I replace my toilet roll collimator with another one with smaller holes, here I've got my LEST collimator made of lots of empty Smarty tubes. They are smaller in diameter than the toilet rolls, but they're the same length. And if we look at the image formed with that, we'll see that we do indeed get better resolution. It's now easy to separate those two uh, sources. Uh, resolution is good, and as we get further away, of course the resolution still falls off with distance, but um, it was always going to be better than the large holes with the toilet bowls. If we look at sensitivity, of course, a consequence of having smaller holes and more concentrated with better resolution is that the total amount of light getting through is less. So the sensitivity of this collimator is not as good as the one with the larger holes. Um, 
and that too remains constant with distance. The sensitivity doesn't change. The resolution does get worse with distance. Of course, the other way to improve the resolution would be to get longer holes. So instead of my toilet rolls, I can use some kitchen rolls. Here is my L-E-K-R, lots of empty kitchen roll collimator. Kitchen rolls are the same diameter toilet rolls, but twice as long. So you see here, we've got a collimator that's twice as long front to back. And if we put that in front of our source, we now get the same sort of resolution as we did with the toilet rolls when we're close, because the holes are about the same size as the toilet rolls. But as we bring the whole thing further away, then the resolution is preserved better with distance. The long holes give us a long bore which keeps resolution better as we get further away. Of course, there's always a price to pay for this, and that is loss of sensitivity, because if we look, the number of holes that are illuminated here is the same as it was with the toilet rolls, but because of the longer length of the holes, each one is further away from the source, and therefore it's dimmer, and therefore we get a lower sensitivity overall than with the toilet roll. So that represents the properties of parallel hole collimators.